Hey guys, what's up? How are you doing? Hope you're doing great. Yeah, in case if you are new on my YouTube channel, please consider subscribe and like and share and comment. Let us uh, know what you think about. Yeah, guys, today I'm with one of the gang member getting here in the building. So he wants to share his story, guys. I hope you are going to enjoy this. Yo. Yeah. Hey guys. Yeah, salute. My daughters, my name is Peter Foss. I was born and raised in Cape Town. My mother died and I was still drinking from her teddy. That's why I'm a hard man. I had a hard life, but I'm not soft and I don't feel sorry for myself. My story goes, my father, he got another wife. She didn't bug her myself with me because I was a stepchild. She beat me. She treated me like a dog. Okay. So she made me strong, you see? Okay. By education, standard five, they say no more. We can't handle you. You can't go to school anymore. So what I do, I follow my father's footsteps. I smoke buttons. We, um, which, was, which age you are at that time? That time, I started maybe 11. 11 years smoking yeah. buttons? Yeah. Oh, that's his bed. So, my at that time was he was in Cape Town? Yeah, I was born in Cape Town. Okay. My father was a soldier in the Air Force. All right. Plus, he was a gang member in the motorbike. You see those bikes? Yeah, gang oh, members? okay. The people that are driving a bigger motorbike. Yeah. Now, I just, I was, in the beginning, I was humble. I was peaceful. I was respectful, but the more they stand on me and they beat me, they make me angry. Something inside me switch. He said, "No more." They they will beat you because of they what? Abuse me because of what? Because, because someone can't just abuse you for no reason. They Maybe have anger it in them. My father he lost his wife, my mother in a car accident. My stepmother, she says, "This one is not my son." Things like that, you know? Okay. And when you're young, it does something to you. Tupac say, lonely children, they turn to thugs. Me, I'm a thug. I'm a blood. I roll with a gang because I don't have family. I lost everything. So when I went to jail the first time, I was 15 years old. Other niggas, they were going to high school. Me, I went to jail. I was a white boy. Okay. In a black man's world, I had to prove myself every single day. But lucky, God, he gave me the strength to never back down. That's why I can sit here today and tell my story. I'm still alive and I'm still strong enough to go another 20 years. Okay. But I must give thanks to God that I'm able to tell my story. Because in the last two weeks, I stopped injecting heroin. After 25 years, I was putting needle in my arm, injecting it to kill the pain because I had too much pain. Mm -hmm. But um, God came into my life and he said, you don't need to do that. You're better than that. You're killing yourself. And I realized what you're saying is true. I'm lucky to be 40 years old. But well, you're 40 years so old. Right? I mustn't take it for granted. I must realize this is a gift from God. He's got a plan for me. That's why I'm doing this interview, because if there's any young people out there, even old people, considering doing drugs, my friend, I'll tell you, you're going to make the biggest mistake of your life. And like it says in the Bible, respect your mother, respect your father, it's true. They bring you into this world and you must thank them for that. They don't owe you nothing. They did the one big favor, they bring you to this world. Okay, so okay, you say uh, the time that time you, you, you start to go to a jail when you were 15. So, after the time uh, you, you grow up, maybe around 20, uh, 20 where you, you, your life was okay. Based. They kept me in jail for four years and eight months as I was an illegal immigrant, illegal alien. I wasn't from that country, Ill illegal immigrant, which country from South Africa in New Zealand. Okay. Okay, after after the which year did you go to to uh, to, to New, New Zealand? Zealand? Yeah, 1999. Which age, which age you were at that time? That time I was 12, 13. 
12 13 yeah okay so you went to live in, in new zealand with who you went to live with you uh, see the story goes my father nobody he was smoking drugs and doing wrong things he was working for the government for the air force uh, for 21 years okay. so he made the decision to leave the air force to take that money go overseas to a better life okay but me i was too young to understand what he was doing at that time and me and my father we didn't get along because of the way he beat me he beat my mother he's okay. a drug addict i see him have sex with other women in front of me when he's drunk but i keep quiet because i don't want my mother my father they must fight oh okay so that one the the what the, are the stepmother or the the the, the stepmother the, i don't know my real mother she died when i was one and a half years old oh me yeah. i got 32 stitches in my head i survived as a car accident so the time you are in uh, in uh, in new zealand uh you live with, with your dad and the step stepmother no you see within two months i was under arrest Wait, in four the, times housebreaking in new zealand Salute. Okay. I was in jail there. That's in the, why they so you were me. you were doing all those things in the age of thirteen in Salute. New Zealand. Huh? Yes. Hey, that's just very bad. Okay. I grew up in Cape Town. I know about crime. Oh, it's okay. So when I went to New Zealand, I see these guys. They say tag lighters. I say, you guys, you don't know tag light. Me, yeah. I'm gonna show you. It was a mistake, I was young. I realized now it wasn't the right attitude. And I was a bad influence on people because I'm big mm. and people respect me. So they listen to me. So that time, my young years, I was leading people the wrong way. But now, the good thing is, I've seen the light. God, I'm not even joking. God, he touched me and he said, I'm giving you one more chance because I see the goodness in your heart and 40 years is a long time on this earth. We cut Saval Isabella, we chop them up, we don't play, we don't use guns, it makes too much noise, we do it quietly, we feed them to the pigs. Lucky this one is my homeboy and my homegirl. Other people, they get chopped up. Must add, I'm not proud of the things I've done. I'm not proud. Uh, I don't feel good. I feel I did it because it's either do or die. It's either them or me. When two killers meet, one he must die. Yeah. And because I'm big, I always have to prove myself I'm white. Ah, oh, let's see if the Sumlungu, uh, he can back his shit up. He talks good, but let's see if he can back it up. And always I back it up. No one has ever knocked me off my feet. Never broke my nose. My teeth is from drugs. No one knocked my teeth out. It's me I knocked teeth out. You see? Okay. But the point of this interview is it's not the life. It's not worth it. You're going to be sorry. If you're lucky to live long enough to realize you made a mistake, you must thank God. Because me, I lived long enough to realize I made a mistake. I traveled the wrong path. But it's never too late. You can still be a man. Don't let people push you around. But don't hurt people unnecessarily. Don't steal from poor people to support poison in your body. You know, there's better things in life. Even if you don't have money, if you have heart and if you have truth and honor, then you are rich. Money doesn't make you rich. It's the spirit. Okay, so um, after after you 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 are doing a crime there by New Zealand, it was a friend that you meet that side. Yeah, I uh, put together a burglary squad, uh, a team of criminals. I was the leader. You was the leader. I was the leader. Okay, so and then after you arrested, what what did happen? Um, you see, my 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 parents say they can't control me. I am too much. Um, I don't hurt them, but they can't stop me from doing what I want to do. Yeah. And um, they made me a property of the state. I became property of the government. I went into um, 
juvenile homes for for young criminals and in New Zealand in New Zealand and I didn't like it so I ran away that's where I started living on the street you see you mean you, you managed to run away from the I prison escaped. they couldn't keep me <laughs> we are dangerous. More than once, more than twice. <laughs> eh? Eventually, they put me in big man's prison. I was too young, but the government, they said, there's nothing else we can do. We must lock this man behind bars. He's a threat to the community. Mm. He's influencing other young people to do the wrong things. I was starting to sell drugs. I was making a lot of money. I was getting respect. I was getting recognized, and I liked it. You understand? Mm. But then I went a little bit too far. They would start to use chemicals, injecting tick. Okay, which chem uh, which kind of chemical we use? Tick. Uh, for tick. Methamphetamine. So where you were getting uh, uh, all those things that to make a tick? Where you were getting? Okay, I was employed by a gang called the Hell's Angels. You may have heard of them, very respected. Mm -hmm. Their job is to make crystal meth. We know it is thick in South Africa. Yeah. You see, my job, I take a stolen car, I drive it through the front window of the chemist, you see the pharmacy. The pharmacy. I take all the chemicals, I know I am, I'm very educated, even though I'm still in five, I'm very smart. I know the chemicals you need to make you. Yeah. So they send me, I take the stolen car, drive through the window, get the chemicals, Everything else that stays for me, the glasses, the cologne, the money in the till, anything, they just want the chemicals for making tea. Then they say I can choose, I can take half payment cash, half drugs, it's up to me. In the beginning, I was about the money, slowly the drugs, it took over, you see. I depended on the drugs to, uh, Give me that energy. It wasn't coming naturally anymore because I, I used up all my natural energy. The yeah. drugs it kills you inside, so you need that drug to keep on getting on. I didn't know it. I was too young at the time, so I ended up getting locked up for four years, eight months. While I was locked up, they sent me a letter. The prime minister of New Zealand, yeah. he sent me a letter. He say, I Helen Clark, the prime minister of New Zealand. I hereby authorize the immediate deportation of criminal offender Peter Foss immediately. He didn't give me a chance to say goodbye to my family. Uh, that was 20 years back. I didn't see my family. Okay. You know? And it's something that's why I carried on using heroin because I had a pain, I missed my family, I lost everything, you understand? Uh, Even though I, I know it was my own fault, no one else did it, it's me who did it. But every day I pay for the mistake I made when I was that age, you understand? Uh, when I'm gonna be finished paying. But I made a deal with the Lord, I thanked Him for bringing me this far, for opening my eyes and seeing my mistakes, because it's still small, three weeks I stopped using heroin. And you can ask Mr. Q, I was looking like shit. I was looking like a hobo, I was dirty. My hair was long. My clothes, it was broken. But God he stepped in and he said, no more, I'm gonna help you. And there's people out there, they wanna hurt me because I was bringing in a lot of money for drugs. Where? No. In New Zealand? No, here and in New Zealand. But I'm talking about here locally. Okay. You know what I mean. Yeah. They don't want to see me prosper and make a better man of myself. They prefer to see me a junkie, begging, please help me one bag. I'm sick. I don't have that anymore. God has helped me with it. One step. After 25 years, it's a miracle. The life expectancy of a heroin addict on the street, they say is 10 years maximum. Yeah. Me, I've been doing it for 25. That's more than double. So I know God, he has a plan for me. Okay, so in the, after you are in New Zealand, in your, your hustling, whatever you was doing, have, we even, have you been killed even someone? That My friend, 
I have made people disappear for things that they have done. Someone, he raped my sister. Yeah. I don't know what happened to him, but he's no longer here. You understand? I didn't ever cross a man who didn't deserve it, like Julio said. I don't fight people. Yeah. I defend my friends and my family. And if I must kill, I will and I have and I will do it again. I'm not scared of blood. I like it. It makes me feel powerful. Oh. Because I kill for the right reason if I have to. I don't like it. It's not something I do a lot. Yeah. Maybe three, four. But only if it's very necessary. And if I didn't kill, me is gonna die. You understand? It's not a choice. You don't have a choice. That's why I carry these things. Okay. So people, they see I'm serious. I'm not playing. My life is not easy. I don't come with smiles. Ah, I see. You're not joking, bro. I yeah. see. You're not joking. So, okay. After, after the, the, the petition, you came back to South Africa. Yeah. Yeah, from New Zealand. Um, we are you left the family here in, in South Africa or no I left them in New Zealand all of them all of them so how did they put you uh, from yeah, New Zealand well. to here to South Africa where did you live at this the first time my friend they no, dropped you by you the airport believe me I stayed four days on the airport my pocket was full of money but I had nowhere to go uh, where did you get it because you was coming from I was from jail. in jail Okay. I knew I was coming back to Africa. Life in Africa is hard. It's not easy. You got to struggle to survive. I was doing hits for people who owe money because I wasn't scared. In jail. No release date, no parole. I'm going to Africa. I got nothing to lose. I need money. That was my number one goal to make money. So I play poker, I play cards, I do debt collection. Yeah. Somebody make you angry. I say, don't fight him. They're gonna reject your parole. You just pay me something, I'll fuck him up for you. It's no problem. See? I was like that because I was young and I was not crazy, but I didn't take shit. Okay. And then, so after the after you live um, four days in the airport, uh, you start. How did you start it? Out, out of desperation, mm. I prayed and I asked God to show me a way. So I had an idea to ask for a phone book. And I looked up my father's sister, who I didn't see for 20 years. And I phoned her and I told her, I can't talk too much, the story's long, but I need your help. So she came to get me. And it's another story altogether, but... She's one of those people that thinks money makes a better person. Yeah. She has too much money, she's better than me. Okay. So we didn't get along. Um, I didn't hurt her, I don't hurt women, I don't hurt my family. I'd rather take myself away, to understand. Okay, okay, uh, uh, sorry to take you back. The day, uh, the day that you, you, you came, uh, they deport you uh, to, Af to South Africa, Where, uh, which, which year was it? That was in 2003. 2003. No, 2000 and I went to 99. I was there for nine years. 2000. What's from 99? I was there for nine years. 99 to nine years. It means uh, it was 2006, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. My friend, seven, I didn't yeah. have a passport. I didn't have an ID, I had nothing. I had one piece of paper stamped, say this man must get out of the country, never come back. So when I got to Joburg airport, uh, they said, passport please sir. I said, sorry, there's a small problem. Me, I don't have a passport. Me, I don't have an ID. Me, I come from jail. So they scratch their head, they don't know what to do. They phone disappeared, they locked me in the cell in the airport yeah. in Joburg. They phoned the superiors. Ah, this way, that way, this white guy is here, come from jail, he don't have a passport. He's got a lot of money on him. We don't know what to do. So the superior told him, I haven't committed a crime. 
I tie myself, the money is mine. There's no way they can prove I, I earned it illegally. So they don't have a choice. They must put me on an airplane to Cape Town because I came from Cape Town. Mm -hmm. So they put me on an airplane to Cape Town. So I sat there for four hours until I made a plan. And it wasn't easy. I had no education. I was used to robbing and stealing. So I tried, I tried to stop the drugs, put my life together. I had a nice girlfriend. In Cape Town? In Cape Town. But slowly but surely the devil, the pain, I couldn't deal with it. So I went back to drugs. Because you know why people use drugs to kill the pain. Yeah. So 25 years later, I find myself in PE. I've been to jail all over South Africa, Bloemfontein, Westville, uh, George, Portsmore, St. Albans, Royal. I'm sure there's a few I'm forgetting too, you know? So you've been all over South Africa, all the cities you've been there? Almost like... 40 convictions in court. My, my criminal record in South Africa alone is almost 40 cases. Ooh. So when I go in front of the judge, they don't play. Even though my crimes is small, I don't steal to hurt people. I steal to survive. You understand? I don't steal, I don't break house and steal the poor man's TV. I go to the shop and I go like this because they have insurance. It's not going to hurt them. You understand? And that's why I survive because I, at least God sees I have this man he cares. He's not robbing from, from poor people. He understands. Yeah. I'm not saying he agrees, but he understands. But the point of my story is I've reached a point in my life where I realized drugs is not the answer. The people that surround you, they are fake. They pretend to be your friends when you have money. When you have no money, you ask them to help you. They tell you to fuck off. So to find a real friend in this world, it's not easy. No, it's God is. is the first choice. You must make your best friend. I'm not even joking. God is real. And if ever you are in the down, in the, in the pits, and you feel you can't climb out, don't give up. Just pray and believe. So you say uh, you, you are 27. I'm a 27, and I'm proud. You're proud to be 27. I'm a captain. I have good news, my friend. I can show you. See? Okay. And this one means I'm a captain. Oh, you got three stars. Six. Three, three. 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 I'm a captain. Okay, so I, I, if uh, I defend the general, no one can come to the general before he pass me. Uh, so my, jo my job in jail is very important and I'm very well respected. People, they will not disrespect me. And it wasn't given to me on a plate. I earned it with blood. Okay. You understand? So uh, how, how did you manage to get that number? Because in the first three, there's a, the language they use. I yeah. think as a white man, I think it's, a, it's a very difficult to learn that language. Yeah. At you see, we the, developed this language many years back, even in the mines. Because in all the things that started in mines in Durban, yeah. the Zulus and the Charas and what, what, what. So they made a language that everyone can understand, but the police they can't understand. Okay. It was a scale. So but today, even the police, he can Sabela. They can Sabela now? Yeah, they call it Sabela. Not talk, we Sabela. Yeah. You see? So... Uh, how did you manage it to understand the language? Because they don't use English and they also don't know uh, how to, use, to friend, speak uh, It's not Zoom, the number is not a dizzy organization. It's structure. They have people that teach you right and wrong, what to do, when to do it. We have ranks and certain people, they enforce certain laws and make sure things go according to order. Okay. It's not, it's not, they don't drive drunk, they know what they're doing. 
The general is on top, the uh, soldiers is on the bottom. In between is the sergeants, the captains, and the, the privates, the brains. Okay. So, our goal is just to survive because the wardens, they smoke all too much. They don't care about us. Uh, our meat we get on is so small, but give them a 20 rand, you get two liters scalped. You understand? Uh, so they're stealing the meat, selling it back to us. It's not right. So how do you survive in a street? Because as a, a white guy, when you are going maybe in a colored community, in a black community, uh, and you are 27, how are they take you like? They respect me, my bro, because there's a lot of white guys that become in Sizwa. But they can talk it, but they can't walk it. They can't back it up. Okay. And everybody knows me. I'm a nice guy. But don't push me too far because I will back it up. Yeah. Because I don't like someone to make me a push. I don't like to be the smaller guy. I don't like someone who must walk on me. You know? Yeah. I, I, I am proud of myself. I'm a man and I will defend myself if I am right. If I am wrong, I will apologize. I'm humble enough to say, look, it's a misunderstanding. I'm sorry. But if you are being wrong and there's no other way, then the kapsa will be so sabela. The okay. knife you will talk. Me, I won't talk. The uh, knife is going to talk. The knife is going to talk. So, uh, now you are uh, 40 years old. So what do you think about the life? About your life? I have no regrets. Made me who I am today. And it's equipped me with the intelligence and the knowledge to be able to help other people that haven't yet gone as far as I have. So I want to talk to the youth, the young people, because our country is in trouble, my friend. Uh, you see this gangsterism, people getting murdered on our streets every day. It's not right. We need to be together. Nobody you come from Tanzania, you come from Somalia, you come from England, it doesn't matter. We are in Africa and we need to stand together. Otherwise, we're not going to survive. Yeah, you understand? Right. That's what I'm trying to tell the people. Don't look at me, I'm a white man. I'm a Pondo man. You know, you know, uh, as uh, uh, black people, what we, we know about white, you know, all white are just a soft, soft people, you know. That's the biggest mistake they make with me. They assume I'm soft like the other whiteys. I'm gonna put my hands in the air and say, I'm sorry, take everything. But no, me, I fight back because I work too hard to get the little thing I have. I don't have mommy and daddy who's gonna, I'm gonna go home tonight, he's gonna make me supper, I'm gonna sleep in a nice bed. It's not for, that thing is not for me. So it's too, it's too difficult to let you get better of me, and I must suffer. I suffered enough, you understand? My yeah. time now is to appreciate life. So what do you think? You don't want to change your life and just talk about the things that you're doing Definitely. and such a better life. Maybe Definitely. And I'm, I'm, like I said, it's only three weeks I stopped injecting heroin. After 25 years, okay. I've made a lot of progress in that three weeks. A lot of the way I think, the way I act, um, it's changed. I, I, it's small changes, but it's making a big picture, you know? Yeah. And eventually, I'm going to study again. I'm going to get my social worker's degree, and I'm going to have the power to help the youth. At least explain to them my story, to show them that if you do this, Maybe not, but possibility you're going to end up like this. And it's not easy. Uh, yeah, this is a good idea, man. This is a very good idea. So, okay, so... Uh, tell the people about... Uh, just tell the people... Uh, to 
to wait for more videos maybe next week gonna have a, uh, guys uh, this is only scratching the surface my story is too long and the people i roll with their stories is too long and you'll be lucky to hear these stories you'll be um fortunate so i advise you to stay tuned tell your friends tell your children if you want them to know the effects of gangsterism and drugs watch this stay tuned do yourself a favor hey, so i hope you will you're going to enjoy the video thank you so much make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel because that's the color of this red it represents blood that's why you see all my stuff is red i would I love red okay <laughs> Okay. The feet, the fire, Satan this one. Is it Satan that one? Satan. So what do you mean about that? This is to know your enemy. Okay. You understand? Mm. This one is a cross. Mm. The balance between good and evil. Okay. This one mm. is cup sable. We live by the cup sable, the knife. We die by the knife. Okay. That's where the blood comes in. Yeah, two, seven. Seven stars in the rising sun. My gang, we work when the sun is shining. We don't work in the night, in the dark, in the shadows. Okay. We work in the light. Because the things we do, we believe is right. Oh, the... Oh, this thing, small protection, you see. I don't want the police to think I'm a serial killer. Mm. But it's good enough, my friend. When I pull this thing, the people that know I'm serious. I'm not coming to make a bribe. I'm coming to make cuck. And I don't make cuck for nothing. You disrespect me, I'm going to chop you up. And God is going to forgive me because he knows my heart. I'm not stupid. I don't do things for wrong reasons. Yeah like that i'm not ashamed to say it. oh this way is the hustle all right all right i get it i get it this my first tattoo when i became in siswa they put this so other people they must see i'm okay. part of the family don't okay. fuck with me it's a big family you see all right, yeah. all right. this one also two seven Oh, 27, that's yeah. right. Okay, I see. You I won't see. find many in the Eastern Cape, 27. This one? Yeah, 27. This one is the knife. Knives. This one is the seven stars. Okay. Represent the seven. This one is the sun. It means we work when the sun is up. Okay, what about this? This one, yeah, you know, there's... <laughs> Everybody gotta love somebody, man. All right, all right, man. But, uh, sure, man. I'm a lovable guy. <laughs> I might be a, I might be a thug, but even thugs need love. You understand? Yeah. All right, can put you on.